Hello everybody, welcome to our new Agile Beam Meetup. Uh, we are very, uh, very Italian meetup tonight. So it's it's uh, because of the I don't know if it's because of the uh, Euro uh, football cup, <laughs> but uh, we have four people from Italy tonight, and uh, we are very happy to to have uh, Paolo and David to uh, Agile coach. And Paolo is one of our inspirator at uh, Agile Buy in Beam. He wrote a very interesting book, uh, Scrum for Hardware. You can uh, find it and uh, read it. It's very, very interesting. And it's the, it's the foundation of uh, our Agile Beam uh, framework. So it's uh, very interesting. So welcome, uh, guys. And uh, we have also uh, Marco and Silvia who are from uh, uh, net, uh, sorry, uh, net uh, engineering and uh, Ecotech. Uh, so tonight we will have a presentation uh, with uh, Sebastian uh, of our Agile Beam community that is growing uh, more and more uh, every meetups and uh, our sponsor Bricks. And after we will have a presentation of uh, Paolo and David. And uh, if you want to ask some question, you have the the comment in uh, YouTube, so don't hesitate to, to ask questions. I will uh, ask uh, our presenter uh, these questions. So, Sebastian. Okay, let's, let's start. So, welcome. Uh, so, the Agile Beam community. <coughs> Sorry, I'm a bit. Uh... <laughs> Not the COVID, but. Uh... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, so we created it uh, around uh, two years ago. Uh, it's uh, basically wh why we created uh, the community is because we we, uh, we uh, interviewed many people about uh, if they used uh, Agile in the domain of construction because we developed a Bricks application and uh, the more we discussed the more we found people that already have experience with it so we were happy about that but uh, we thought it was useful to have um, a common uh, common place to discuss and to uh, exchange about uh, practices. And uh, so we created uh, what is Agile Beam. Basically, it's uh, it's a website that you can find at uh, agilebeam.org. So it's a participative website. You can uh, you can ask uh, to have uh, an account to be able to uh, to create some pages and to contribute. Uh, we have also some groups on, on different channels. So on on meetup.org, on LinkedIn, uh, Slack workspace where we can discuss uh, more on a daily basis. And uh, finally, our main activity is to organize some meetup uh, each month. So every month we, we, find, we try to find some uh, new speaker uh, around the world. So if you are interested to, to talk at the next uh, Agile Beam meetup, uh, welcome. And uh, uh, you can communicate with us uh, on Slack, for example. And you can have more, more information at this link that you can follow. <clears throat> So apart from uh, from uh, the meetup, we try to uh, to um, to make the methodology more uh, more um, to to define the methodology. So it's still a, a work in progress, and huh? you can really uh, contribute. We inspired, by the way, a lot uh, of the work of uh, Joey Justice, for example, uh, uh, that we work on uh, the domain of industry and car manufacturing and. Uh, about uh, agile hardware. So here in this uh, di di in this schema, you can find different inspiration from uh, Kanban methodology, from Scrum, from uh, XP, Lean, design thinking, and so on. Uh, so uh, we think that uh, this methodology can be combined, and uh, we need to find the, the ones that uh, fit to to the project, and uh, especially to to document uh, some use case, some real use case uh, uh, in the domain of construction. And uh, <clears throat> you can contribute to this use case. So we have a section uh, case studies where you can, uh, apart from the meetup, you can also uh, describe how you practically use the uh, agile methodology in the domain of construction. So we have a very good example with uh, Edward Murphy, who, who was a, a previous speaker. And we, we took the time to, to explain in, uh, in detail uh, uh, what you do, you, you, you can uh, you can do uh, shorter than than that. Uh, the, the important is to understand in, a, in just a page that we can share in LinkedIn or elsewhere uh, how you proceed. And to find some content, so you can find in 
in the YouTube channel. So in YouTube, you can find uh, all our past meetup. You can uh, subscribe to the the YouTube channel and uh, get updated when there are new new video. And at the, if you could not uh, attend to this uh, meetup tonight, you can uh, see the replay here. So now I'm going to talk about Bricks. So Bricks is uh, is a collaborative platform to practice agile in the domain of architecture and construction. So our idea is inspired by other platform, popular platform like, like Treo or like Jira or, or other platform, but adapted to the domain. So especially connected with the BIM uh, BIM ecosystem. So our main focus was to um, to uh, cut the silo that are one of the major problems of the, the domain. Uh, and uh, uh, because we have several companies, separate connected company, uh, the owners, the engineers, the architects, the B managers that generally work in parallel, but with uh, little exchange, too, too little exchange. And uh, with Agile, you will discover how you can, uh, you can uh, really uh, make this collaboration more, more, um, more fluid. So BRICS will allow to follow up the topics, to historize the decision, especially the decision of meeting, to plan the next meeting, and uh, finally to integrate with the BIM thanks to the Open BIM uh, standard, BCF and EFC. So you can, uh, the first step is to, uh, to uh, list wh what needs to be done, but not list it uh, the way people are, are generally used by uh, sending email or, or tracking on Excel, but uh, to, to do it in a structured way where you can uh, precisely know what step uh, needs to be done to, to succeed and uh, who is in charge of the, of the task. After on a, on a weekly or on a sprint, on an iteration basis where, where when you use some sprint and where, when you, every week you, you need to know where the, the project is, what has been done, what has not been done. So thanks to this uh, Kanban board, you can do it and, uh, and uh, precisely know at any time uh, what needs to be done. After to, to, to have a, a better view on the next step, we have a display uh, kind of roadmap or gun view, but a simplified gun view where you can uh, plan your, your next iteration and uh, see what's, uh, what's need to be done also. And finally, we, we are connected with uh, the BIM model uh, with uh, the 3D model, and this makes a difference with uh, with software like Treo or Jira, where this integration is not uh, not yet done. And uh, you can see um, if if you have experience of Agile in the IT industry, uh, GitLab or G GitHub is the, the place where you store the code, and Jira and Treo is the place where you you manage the, the task. But in uh, in construction, the, the equivalent of code is the 3D model, the BIM model. So Bricks is connected with the BIM model in a similar way. And the, the important is that you, when you discuss about the task, you discuss in the context of the, the project, and you always know where the project uh, is. Even if you don't have Revit, if you you are not a technical guy, you you can still uh, give some important feedback. So, so I encourage you to discover Bricks, and uh, it's a free app. Uh, I mean, you have uh, you can use it for free uh, if you have a small team of up to three users. And uh, for for our dear um, uh, community member, we we offer a special coupon of uh, of thirty percent of reduction. So. You, you have one month to use it, so take advantage of this if you want to have a paid version. So now I will uh, I will stop and I will give the speech to, to Paolo. Okay, um, thank you very much, Sebastian. <clears throat> uh, Paolo, you share your screen? Yes, I need to share. Uh, Marco, it's Marco the beginning. Ah, Marco, Marco. okay, yes. so let's start with Marco. Okay, can you see it? Uh, yes. 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 Perfect. It's okay. Okay. So, hello to everyone. I'm really pleased to virtually meet all of you. Briefly, I am Marco Menegon, president of the board of director of Encodec. And uh, since one of my personal interests is uh, studying company organizations and uh, so on, I'm an agile enthusiast since the year 2K, more or less when I worked for uh, ICT companies. Now we'll present you Encotech. Who is Encotech? 
Well, uh, we are people with uh, great experience in construction and uh, we put uh, client satisfaction as our primary value. Uh, we, we want to reach the, the goal. Uh, it's a must for us to reach the goal in terms of uh, timing, cost and quality. We want to be flexible as usual. And uh, we also try to be innovators. So to have a, a competitive advantage, advantage we, we want to be uh, innovators in our market. Uh, our motto is uh, Swiss Way Italian Creativity. So we approach the AEC market uh, joining the, the Swiss Way precisions, timings, uh, uh, and so on with the Italian creati creativity, uh, mainly in problem solving or in finding alternatives. Uh, our uh, mission is the we wish to support our clients becoming, becoming their outsourced technical department. We work mainly in these markets, so building or renewing uh, offices, residentials, stores, and uh, museums, and so on. So we go from uh, little stores of uh, 60, 17 square meters to more than uh, uh, 1,200 square meters uh, uh, stores, with also many references to high standing luxury brands. So. Uh, we have um, a lot of examples. Uh, we also build from small apartments like this one, 35, 40 square meters, to uh, buildings uh, built in concrete or in wood, and uh, to villas of more than 400, 4,000 square meters, or to theaters, or to museums, and so on. But uh, we don't to bore you with uh, all our tens of references. Uh, but uh, as we can see, one of the features of our works arise. So each project is a completely different project. So it's impossible for us to standardize a way of doing things. And so we have to adapt. Our situation, I think, is uh, almost uh, uh, common. We have uh, clients that has to spend uh, some money, that wants to spend money. Each of our clients uh, has dreams. Some of them are more romantic dreams, like their homes or the nest of their family. Some others uh, have more uh, return of investment dreams, uh, like investors. None of them have technical skills. So our work is to help them in spending their money in the right way in order to obtain uh, their dreams. Uh, we offer all these services. As you can imagine, we offer different services for different kind of customers, for uh, each kind of uh, project and needs, for uh, uh, the mix of the company that works in each project is different. The site works are different, environments are different, and also since we work in different countries, also rules, laws, and engineering and building standards are different. So uh, a question uh, arise, a simple question. Is, it, uh, is a mess coordinating uh, usually 30 actors for each project in, uh, in average? with today 25 projects ongoing, with daily accidents, and in the meantime, answering to the client request? Yes, it's a mess. And uh, also, please note that the mess, the, the mess is, is uh, also inside Encotec. Uh, all the people here has different skills, seniority, uh, citizenship, culture, and so on. And so from the... The beginning, uh, at the beginning of Encotec, uh, we, we missed a real organization uh, because uh, we started as a startup. And so we, we started with the, the, the classic uh, way of uh, doing small projects. So uh, a senior uh, with a junior, coupled with a junior. But this one uh, cannot go uh, on for many time. So, I suppose that uh, most of you know the Canavin framework. Briefly, for those who 
that don't know it, it's a framework. Uh, uh, this framework is a problem solving tool that helps you uh, to put situation into five domains, uh, complicated, simple, chaotic, complex, uh, or disorder, defined by cause and effect relationship. Also here, I don't want to bore you with this framework, but only underline how with the introduction of Scrum, we moved from some, something in disorder, some uh, situation in chaotic, to the complex uh, domain. We will see how we did it uh, in the next section of the presentation, but now I think I bore you enough, so I'm really pleased to give the virtual microphone to Silvia Furlan, CEO of uh, Net Engineering. Uh, see you later. So Thank first you. I'll take over the sharing. Sorry. Oh. Can you see my screen? Yes. Yes. Yeah. All right. Okay. Yes. Hi, everybody, and thank you very much for uh, the invitation. Um, who we are? Net Engineering is uh, an Italian engineering company. Um, this is our identity. We feel we are engineering artists. Uh, because every project, as Marco was saying before about Encotech, is a, a, a different one, is a unique. There's no um, repetitive or uh, activities or, or projects. Uh, and we want that every project is a work of art for us. Um, we are very good. We have in-depth uh, knowledge in many domains of engineering. Uh, but together with this, uh, what we are recognized by the market is that we are able uh, to put everything together, the coordination, uh, the big picture uh, made by many different disciplines of the uh, civil engineering. Um, and this is our way uh, of doing. Uh, what we do is um, every kind of um, infrastructure project you can see here, uh, highways, bridges, railways. Um, this is the high-speed uh, railway project, one of the biggest in Italy ongoing at the moment, the Napoli Bari, uh, but also urban mobility. And Paolo, if you can go back to the um, previous slide with our mission, what we want to do is um, having engineering excellence, not only for mobility, for core business, but also urban regeneration and industry. And what we want to do is to safeguard the legacy of future generation by designing smart, shared, and sustainable infrastructure. And in this environment for us, uh, choosing Scrum as a, an organizational tool um, was somehow simple because the value at the base of Scrum is the same uh, we share and we want to put in our project. Okay, so let's take a look at what uh, Scrum is. Uh, I will do a quick recap, uh, not just of the basics, uh, because uh, uh, hopefully everybody will know the stuff, but also some of the advanced uh, part of Scrum that are ignored by the majority uh, that we use in these uh, two implementation. Uh, so that's, that's me, so I, I'm a Scrum trainer and a Scrum Master trainer for Scrum Inc. And I work also with Jess Sutherland, the co-inventor of Scrum, and the other of the Scrum for Hardware. So you will have the opportunity to download my book if you want for free, if using this code uh, up to the end of the month. And I hope you will find it useful also in uh, your context. Few words about Scrum. So the word Scrum and what you see on, on the screen, it comes from rugby. And so the metaphor is to teamwork and cohesive team that know where to go, know the direction, and together they work together and they help each other to reach the common goal, the team goal. So Scrum is a very lightweight framework. Uh, the Scrum guide, the rules of the game, it's 14 pages. And uh, the idea is organizing teamwork uh, and make them to work uh, in iteration, uh, in an in, in iterative incremental way. 
And thanks to that, uh, having an uh, inspection adaptation, uh, a very frequent cycle, starting from daily. So let's talk briefly about the, the Scrum framework. Everything you have to do in your life, any, any kind of project you want to build, it might be a very complex uh, uh, railroad, or it might be even uh, a simple uh, uh, receipt uh, for, for making you dinner, you will have three kinds of problems. The first kind of problem is what to put in this project, in this product, what would be the feature and the characteristic that the, the user will uh, love and use uh, more often, and also how to build it uh, technically, and of course the time. Everybody wants to be here, building the right product uh, in the right way, in the right time. What happens if you find yourself to be here? You build uh, the right product, the one that was the market was asking you, and also you bid it the right way. So technically it's excellent. Unfortunately, the time is not right. So you were slow and your competition took over the best niche part of market of or the niche market of your of your sector. If you're here, you are bidding the right product, the one that the market is asking. You also was very fast, so you bid it in the right time. But technically, you didn't choose the right uh, decisions. So the the cost of uh, rework, the cost of maintenance, the defects uh, will steal all your earning in the meter. And if if you're here, you build uh, a beautiful cathedral, technically perfect, also in a very short time. But what uh, the customer were asking is not a cathedral. Uh, it's a tent because they wanted to go on vacation. And so you, your product will take dust uh, in your warehouse. Not a good place where to be. The Scrum framework uh, try to make you stay in the center of this diagram, dividing these accountabilities and these uh, prerogatives within the three roles of, of that Scrum recognizes. The product owner is the one that focuses on value and define what to do. This Scrum master is a role that is not the, traditionally is not present in a traditional project manager, is the one that instead of focusing on the product, he focuses on the productivity. And the developers, they focus on the how, the technical point of view of how to build the product. Of course, you need multiple people, so we talk about a team. All together, they are called the Scrum team. He works in an iteration that no, are no longer, no longer than one month, and they started from an order list of things that we want to, uh, to build called the product backlog. What they are, they are the things that today we know we have to build in order to achieve the product goal. At the beginning of iteration, we do the sprint planning, an event where we gather together and we decide what to do during the iteration, during the sprint. And together, the Scrum team builds the sprint backlog. That is the short-term plan on how to achieve the short-term goal. We talk about the sprint goal. Daily, the developers meet to replan and adapt based on what they learn during the sprint in, event, in a short event called Daily Scrum, no, no, no longer than 15 minutes. And at the end of this iteration, you will have a, a product increment. What is the product increment? Basically, it's what they succeed in building during the sprint Correlated with what they built before. What means? We mean that we want something uh, done as defined by the definition of done that the Scrum team gave themselves. And with this increment, what they do, it's another event called the Sprint Review. The Sprint Review is an event where we inspect the product increment, inviting somebody else, generally known as stakeholders. Who are these people? Well, I think what it might be anybody it can be top management in the company, it can be expert in our company, it can be champions of some particular discipline in our company, but it might be even some user or customers. Anybody that can enrich the Scrum team in understanding if we are building the right thing, building in the right way, building the right time. Thanks to this updatation and the learning that the Scrum team gathered just after the sprint review. We have a private meeting called the Sprint Retrospective. The Scrum team have this meeting 
and uh, they think uh, what it works, what it, it works less, and what we can change to improve the way we work. And so we decide something, an action improvement uh, that we plan it immediately, and then we start again. So it's a continuous uh, activity of uh, planning some work, building some work, inspecting that work, learning, improving, and starting again. And of course, we have the, the so-called the product backlog refinement is the continuous activity of maintaining product backlog clear and ordered so that uh, when the developers need to, to work on something, it is clear what we need, need it to do. And that's it, that's the scrum that everybody knows. The three roads, the five events, and the three artifacts as defined by the scrum guide. So for many people, this, they, people think that this is the goal, yeah? So let's, let's do Scrum, that's, that's how we do Scrum. The three roads, the five events, and three artifacts. Well, not really, because if you want to do something really, really complex, the Scrum guide is the starting point, then the invitation is to use the Scrum patterns. What is a Scrum pattern? Well, the Scrum pattern, first of all, a pattern might be an original object used to make copies of a set of repeating objects and decorative design in other disciplines, something like this nice shirt. Well, it's not what we are talking about. We are talking about a general reusable solution to a commonly occurring problem within a given context. The Scrum, the, sorry, the pattern the definition comes from architecture, Alexander, and then this idea of uh, socializing uh, elegant solution to recurring problem uh, spread across different uh, disciplines. So from architecture, we found a uh, pattern uh, in mechanical engineer, uh, even in software engineer, uh, and organizational design. And here we are, we have two books of reference by James Copley and Neil Harrison, the first one, 2004, and uh, Jeff Sutter and James Copley again, a scrum, a scrum book, the second book is from 2019. So I, I, I used to say the scrum pattern are something new and old at the same time because the pattern in a, in a book, they emerged from a research that it's almost 30 years old. But the, book is, the second book has been published in 2019, so it's something recently known to the majority. So let's see what kind of uh, pattern we use, starting from our first one. How to cope in a situation like in net engineering, when you have multiple teams working together and needing a sort of coordination. So why having multiple teams? Well, if you have a, a small increment, well, you stay with one team and you're happy. Imagine that this increment is something very, very big and very, very complex. Now, this is not something that can be achievable by a single team. So what you can do is using a, a pattern called the Scrum of Scrum and forming a team of teams. So if a team is a bunch of individuals working together and helping each other in order to achieve the common goal and the team goal, a team of teams is a bunch of teams working together and helping each other in order to achieve uh, the team of teams goal. And so basically it's just like a scrum team and some of the things that you know from scrum, you might need it for the scrum, the team of teams as well. For example, if we talk about refining the product backlog to clarify items and make it smaller so that they can stay within uh, a week, uh, a two week sprint in our case, you might want to have a scaled event called the meta scrum that is the, the refinement of the refinement uh, that, needs, that, that is taken to clarify the high level uh, item before they can be managed by a single team. And probably you want to have also the Scrum Master of the same team working together and manage uh, daily the impediments that uh, arise across different teams and also have uh, every sprint a scaled retrospective so that uh, even the team of teams uh, get benefit from the learning of each team uh, and collectively share the, the improvements uh, so that this can affect uh, multiple teams. And so I'm le leading, leaving the, the 
the virtual mic to Marco and David again to talk about the implementation of Encosec. Marco. Marco is sharing the presentation with In our now. slides. And that's all the odd couple. <laughs> uh, I remember the first time uh, in, we, when uh, I met Marco. It was an evening uh, in a restaurant uh, because we are Italian, so we like to discuss uh, also business ideas uh, with a glass of wine in our hands. And uh, uh, I was, uh, and I am a, a coach, an agile coach uh, in the oldest bank uh, in the world. But uh, I also help companies uh, with uh, consultant services and uh, coaching uh, Agile. And uh, Marco in that evening uh, told me, I worked for many years and I work today also as a manager in software development. And uh, now I work in construction, but I see the same problems. I, I watched uh, what was the solution of these problems in uh, software development and uh, for sure is a Scrum. Companies uh, that develop software with Scrum work better. So maybe that uh, this is a good idea also using Scrum in construction. It was a challenge to accept uh, and uh, I love challenges. I've also, I have also argued that Agile and Scrum are life philosophies rather than methodologies. And uh, they can be applied for me, in my opinion, in any field. So why not uh, in construction? We decided to do an experiment and check uh, as we did it, uh, if the result uh, satisfied us. And uh, now the teams. Okay, so after uh, some uh, experiments, uh, this is uh, our uh, simple AEC organization that uh, responds to the board of directors. We have uh, two levels of uh, product owners, one chief product owner, that is uh, Francesco Ricci, uh, the director of the company, that knows and interacts with almost every client, and one other product owner, Susanna, with a more operative interaction with clients and with more familiarity with boards, with backlog and stories and so on. Then we have uh, two teams. They are called uh, Mente Locale and uh, Tartarughe. Uh, the teams uh, themselves choose their name uh, with uh, Rossella and Nicolò as the Scrum Masters of the respective team. And then, David, let's go. You know well, the... yes. Uh, first, uh, first problem, uh, first challenge uh, was uh, explain the roles of Scrum to the, the, the people of the company. Was not easy because uh, Encotech uh, is a company full of professionals uh, who manage their work uh, independently and uh, in uh, a really autonomous way. Each architect or engineer is uh, uh, work on a project and uh, is like uh, a small entrepreneur with responsibility and a total, quite total autonomy. Explaining uh, that uh, there was uh, a team and uh, there is a scrum master and also a product owners was uh, really not trivial. At the uh, first time, everyone was afraid of losing autonomy and uh, prestige. With coaching, I helped them to identify these fears and understand, for example, that Scrum, Ma that Scrum Master is not the team leader. It's a common problem, right? Did you hear them in other times? Uh, sorry, um, I, I have a question, David. 
Yes. Uh, when you say there is two teams, and uh, what are what are they doing? These teams. Uh, what what uh, what what is their their work? They are not a developer like uh, in the IT industry, so. No, they yeah. are architects and engineers. Okay. Okay. Well, okay. And so also they, they the design, they follow each site work. Uh, so from the design uh, in the first stages of the project till the uh, completion of the project. So following all the uh, suppliers that uh, um, that uh, together build the, the, the buildings or uh, till the, the breakfast at uh, the villa in one case. So, <laughs> so they are working on the same project. No, no. Uh, each team follow different project. This is one big uh, uh, yes. issue <laughs> that we have, and then we may speak a little bit later. But okay. it's a big. Each team follow normally. I think uh, I on my back, uh, 12, 10, 12 projects. So okay. So each team have a group of projects, and they, yeah. they manage yes. their, their projects. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And they are multidisciplinary less, uh, teams. Yes. Yes, more or less half of the project of the company because they are two teams. Okay, then the roadmap. Uh, first of all, uh, we develop uh, the, a vision of uh, Encotech company. Uh, and uh, after that, uh, we try to produce uh, a, a big roadmap of uh, all the projects and uh, all the, 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 the with the uh, more or less uh, six, 12 uh, months of uh, targets. It was not trivial. Few people in the company knew the information, despite being Encotech, a very transparent company with its people. But uh, transparent uh, is not the same of uh, uh, information saturated. We worked on information saturation, trying to visualize all projects and delivery dates on the information radiators. As the information went on the walls, awareness grew throughout the company. And the most listened the comment was, are we really doing all this work? Really? Another very important information that leaped uh, to the eye was that uh, there were periods uh, with a lot of work and other periods more lighter. And uh, using this roadmap, we develop our first backlog. Our first backlog wasn't uh, really a backlog because a backlog is uh, a unique list of uh, prioritized items, uh, on which uh, people work uh, one after the other. But uh, our first backlog was divided into project because uh, people think in these first times that uh, uh, we had to identify the most important things uh, inside uh, each project. I was not immediately accepted that there was a backlog with a single list of items. Um, I decided that we could uh, experience this because I was sure at the time it would make us uh, learn something. We learned two things after a couple of sprints and uh, not after months. The first was that even in each project, there are periods of intense work and others of lighter work. So in the same sprint, there were different workloads for each architect. The second thing was that everyone's, every, every professional tends to work on his construction site, on his project because uh, it is in his comfort zone, obviously. But uh, this is a problem at a company level. So after a couple of sprints, uh, we split uh, uh, this backlog and uh, we come to a unique list backlog. So 
was uh, a unique list backlog only for the activity of design and project. We have, we have also a buffer on the right side of my slide for the direction of work, for the, the work on site, the, the work of building, because the work of building is really repetitive and is a fixed time work. So we, we use a buffer for this work and we prioritize all the, the work on design. One thing surprised everyone. By dividing the activities, by splitting, it become uh, much easier and uh, they can be performed even by a, a technician, an architect, who does not know the whole project uh, of another. But uh, if I have to write a specification for an electrical system, for instance, it's very similar between different projects. So I can write this specification also in a project that is not the mine. And uh, another surprise is what that uh, the, these little activities become uh, tend to, 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 to make easier the onboarding of new people in the company because they can start to work quite immediately after they they join the company and uh, now we present the, the real boards of Encotech these are the latest real Encotech boards in the digital first ones. digital yes <laughs> In the first stripe, uh, you can see the roadmap. We are in July, so the second part of the year is uh, full of uh, milestone. And the first part that is, that are the, the next, uh, the, the first six months of uh, 2022 uh, are uh, lighter. There are, there is only few activities, few milestones for the project that uh, start uh, just today. In the second stripe, uh, you can see the tactical board, uh, which cover more or less one month, two sprints, and uh, which also include the work on site, the building work, and the ambulance. In the third stripe, uh, you can see the two sprint boards of the two teams, uh, and the, the correspondent burn down on the right. I would like to say a few words about ambulance. In the work on site, uh, they are more or less inevitable. Unexpected events are on the agenda and must be resolved immediately. Otherwise, the builders stop working. But sometime, uh, the teams also decide to postpone a decision at the time of construction in order to be able to decide by looking what happens in the field. We use inspect and adapt of Scrum also in building. Now cost versus benefits. Another great achievement uh, was the management of the return of investment. The product owner, uh, in order of the best work for customers, sometimes asked uh, to spend a lot of time on each activity. When it became uh, evident uh, that uh, uh, there was a lot of work for each activity, the product owner identified rules that, for example, described how many suppliers to invite depending on the amount of the contract uh, at a tender. Other decision became natural for product owners as sprints and boards made team work transparent. I still remember the chief product owner, Francesco, 
tearing the less important post-it off of the board, saying this no, this no, this later, and uh, uh, prior of uh, this, transparency, this transparency on the information radiator, all items as the same priority. So uh, we, we, we usually do one after the other. Now we have to spend some work, uh, some words uh, on overload and uh, over scheduling. Charette, ah. we say in French. Yeah. <laughs> I wish I could say that teams work quietly without overload and without over scheduling, but uh, that wouldn't be completely true. However, I can say that the overload is evident and that more and more often the team with less load helps the one with more load by taking items from the sprint backlog of the other team. Maybe the overload is inherent the construction work, but with Scrum, it becomes easier to manage a smoother and more regular workflow. And above all, overload problem emerge first. And so if we know, we can manage. Now a few words about the readiness, the story readiness. The readiness of the work uh, to be carried out was the thing that made people waste the most time, the most work. Some work is very important and also very urgent, maybe, but uh, he had an external dependency on the team that was not resolved. So the team cannot uh, work on these items also if they are urgent and important. In the first sprints, this was the order of the day. Every day we had not ready stories in the sprints. And at the end of the sprint, they weren't done simply because it was impossible. There was a this was another important awareness uh, that the product owners reached. If you want the team to work on a story, you have to get it ready. Otherwise, it will just uh, be a big waste of time. Only a big waste of time. The work of the product owner has increased, obviously. It increased a lot. But the number of story points for sprint has also started to run because if all the backlog is ready, the team can work rapidly and can go running. And now retrospective. The retrospective in Encotech is a very, very important moment. And for this reason, it cannot be so frequent. The whole company stops and uh, start to talk about work improvement. Here we can find uh, uh, the result of the last retrospective. It was a windy day and they were outdoors. So it was necessary to, to find a, a shelter window uh, where to stick the posts and help themselves with also with the scotch tape because it was very, very windy. As you can guess, three clusters emerged. The central one, the larger cluster, said we must be more cross-functional and everyone must also work 
own project other than his own. The need of cross-functionality is really urgent in Encotech teams. And then we have to work about cross-functionality. As yet to grow, but everyone is striving to find ways to increase it. In one of the last projects, for example, due to a very tight deadline given by the client, we experimented swarming, the swarming pattern. A pool of architects started working on the same project to shorten finish first and this in addition to shortening delivery times it has created a lot of motivation in the people of the teams and the work that is that follows uh, can is uh, is taken by more people because many people knows the project swarming was uh, a really good technique to project together and to rise the cross functionality. Stop project, start building was another challenge. It is true that we accept changes even at advanced stage of development, but changing as a wall is not the same of replacing a single line of code in a software program. It's a little bit more difficult. However, we also realize that the customer understand what they really want as they see the first things realized. The teams have, their, have therefore decided to spend less time at the beginning on a very detailed design and then decide with the customers what can be decided later. Another challenge was uh, the definition of done and uh, the acceptance criteria. Acceptance uh, criteria need to grow further. Compared to the first sprints, the awareness of what is expected as a result when regarding a content uh, of a post-it has uh, grown tremendously but still needs to improve, still needs to grow. The cost benefit to take into account is that the more these aspects have to be treated and described into the post-it, the more time the product owner will have to use to write them. It is a struggle between the product owner's time and the team's outcome. We are searching the good cost benefit uh, about product owner's time and team outcome. So that's all. Okay, thank you very much, David. Uh, I have a question from uh, F. Cop. What would the Scrum Master and the product owner definition be in the construction? So do, do, do you try to, to find the other definition for this term or do you use it like that? Marco, what's the reality? Uh, the definition are uh, the same of the Scrum Guide. So there are no differences. So uh, the product owner is um, the, the, the person that interacts with the client and uh, that knows uh, what the team has to do. And uh, also the Scrum Master needs to be a, a facilitator, the one who orchestrates all the things, but uh, it's a different step. The, 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 difficult, the, the real difficult is uh, not the name, but uh, as we will see in, um, in a while, uh, the, the change management in, uh, in doing these activities. Hmm. Hope to be to answer. Okay, so you keep the, the same name. And uh, just a short question with the, the COVID, the, the, I think uh, you, you, you shouldn't use uh, uh, 
a real uh, post-it board. So you, you, you go digital and it's, it's work the same? Or is there a yeah. specific problem with that? We, we were really lucky because uh, in Switzerland, uh, we uh, authorities closed activities only for one month and a half, more or less, in, uh, in 2020, the uh, March, April 2020. So uh, at the time, uh, we used uh, Jira uh, like, uh, for supporting the, 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 the boards and so on. But we, since we live uh, in this, more or less in the same building uh, all the time, we 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 love to 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 feel the the paper and to move it, and uh, we <laughs> it's a it's a step that we have to we have to grow up, we have to modernize ourselves. But uh, it's uh, it's also a, a, a game. It's it's beautiful to have. Uh, this piece, this piece, uh, this little piece of paper to, to yeah. <laughs> for for starting, I think it's the uh, it's the best. Yes, yeah. It's, you have the materiality. I have another question for Goodly Kulangara Sony. Uh, can you share uh, names of some top GC companies who have uh, applied at Scrum? Do you, do you, do you know that or or Paolo or David? I, I don't know. Can can we keep this kind of question for the end because we will have ah. twenty minutes at okay. the end. Okay. No so problem. if there's any question, I will leave it at the end and unless okay, okay, okay. Okay. otherwise we will we can okay. lose the track of time. Thank you. Okay. So I will take over Go the on. sharing. Okay, Sylvia. So let's start with our uh, experience in implementing uh, Scrum. Uh, first of all, uh, why we decided uh, to go agile and, and to implement Scrum. Um, can you move, Paolo? Sorry, <laughs> the slide. Um, mainly because our world is a very complex world. So we want to find a way to manage complexity. Uh, we want to put our people at the center of the project, at the center of decision process at the center of their uh, work life because we can make our project only with the support and the, the uh, passion of our engineers and architects. Uh, we want to empower uh, our people on decision making and we want to foster the team spirit and these are items that are essential for us uh, to be able to cope uh, with the complexity of our world. That is a complexity that is outside, but also inside. Sorry about, okay. Um, if, if we can um, go to the next slide. Um, uh, how to describe uh, um, how the company structure change uh, and uh, I think that is uh, looking at the org chart. Uh, if we go to our previous organizational chart, the classical one, um, you, here you can see function, uh, you can see who is at the top, uh, who is in the middle, but you cannot understand uh, what is the complexity and how many people are involved in our projects uh, with all the uh, different interaction. So it's not describing at all the complexity. Um, I would say is a waterfall organizational chart. Uh, while uh, if, we can, if we could describe or try to design our organizational chart today uh, is a completely different one. Uh, today we have 10 Scrum teams that are working um, and I think that this uh, image uh, is showing uh, one of the most important points that is um, empower people uh, and putting people at the center. Uh, we want that our Scrum team are able to make their own decision, uh, being aware what is the interest of the team and of the company. If we are able to do this, it means that all the time that is needed to take decision is shorter and we can go quickly. Of course, um, 
uh, we are at the beginning. And uh, we started with um, 10 teams uh, in different waves uh, from the beginning of this year uh, as until end of April, May. Um, we have either um, specific team uh, with one competence or uh, multifunctional with many competencies inside. We had to adjust a little bit during the time, uh, but now we are quite satisfied of these uh, multifunctional teams. Paolo, I leave it to you. Okay. <clears throat> so, um, let's see some animation we prepare because, you know, during COVID, we are all remote, so you can actually take pictures of people doing stuff uh, with the boards and post-its. Uh, so I prepared this to make understand the flow of the work uh, during the, the, what happens in the company from when there is a new project uh, up to we deliver. And also some of the patterns that we used uh, to solve the, 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 the measure of the problems. So the first one is uh, a pattern uh, that comes from Scrum scale. So the managing team, uh, uh, meet in a, in a meeting called the Executive Meta Scrum. And when we, ha we are happy and we are celebrating because we have a new project, the intention is to find the prioritization and the priority of this within uh, a single uh, enterprise product backlog. So there is a lot of projects to do, a lot of things uh, to, 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 to make re uh, uh, reality and also a lot of deadlines that we need to respect because we committed to that. And so the Xenity Meta Scrum start thinking how it might be the high level priority of this new project and find the space to accommodate this. We did this exercise the first time just before COVID that we were in, in the, in the Mozerice, one of the, 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 the quarter of the company the 25th of February, when we started with the, the first implementations. And so when you have a team of teams and multiple teams together, we said that we need uh, them to uh, prepare the product backlog item at a high level for the teams before actually they can manage it. And so we have this uh, Meta Scrum team that is composed by all the POs of the company, the CPO, some business owner, people that are still functioning as a business person, but they don't have a team for their own, so they represent some maybe big, big projects that needs to be, uh, to have a, a fixed uh, co uh, connection with the, with the company or any kind of uh, uh, business expert on some areas. And collectively, that is the, the first exercise of trying to understand if you can slice the project in different uh, uh, parts so that it would be easy to, to, to manage. And then we clarify what we need to achieve so that it's clear that it's at a high level what is the mandate from, from the client and how we want to uh, reach the client success with this project. And then there is the product owners that uh, find themselves uh, agreeing on who can do what uh, with, with which team. During the sprint, we use a pattern that David already introduced called the swarming pattern. You can see the, the link if you want to understand more. I borrowed the, the slogan from Kanban, stop starting, start finishing, to make the first pilot team, again, this is pre-COVID uh, picture, to have the first uh, Scrum team, the pilot team, to understand that it was better to have uh, a finished project and two not started project rather than just having started projects and nothing finished. And so what is the behavior? The idea is to, like bees, swarm around a single uh, project and, and, and make that deliverable done as soon as possible and then moving on in a fluid way 
so that we found the, the developers found themselves the best way to deliver what they expected in the, the shortest time. This is something that can, can be done for every team at a high level with a high level planning and it's a delegation within a certain boundary. That, that's how the team is, is used in this way, to have a local decision for a low level prioritization. But of course, Scrum, as I described it before, it's quite uh, idealistic, right? Because we say, well, every two weeks uh, we plan the work, we do the work, and then we review. But we have uh, some, some unplannable work. So how can we do that? In Scrum, we have a pattern called the interruption pattern. So how it works, instead of planning for all the team capacity, we leave some empty space as a buffer. And we estimate that buffer uh, 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 as well, like it was uh, an item to deliver. And so the team start working normally. During the sprint, if there is a, an interruption coming, the product owner have the decision to take. Is this something that is not for us? So you can even say no and maybe uh, talk with the Meta Scrum to see if there is another team that can take a care of that is something that we can plan later so in this case the product owner put that red sticky notes on the product backlog or is something that needs to be done now in that case the things goes on the buffer the first available team member or maybe a, car, a pair if it's the case take care they, they take care of the interruption and they, they make it done as soon as possible and they keep working uh, on, on the next uh, planned board uh, item. And in case the number of in, interruption uh, over, overcome the size of the buffer, well, in that case, the pattern says that we need to stop the sprint uh, uh, replan a notification to the management uh, and the stakeholders if some uh, deadline are delayed. Sorry, Paolo. Sorry. Yes. Uh, I still have the control of the presentation, so uh, uh, I was not following your. Uh, maybe Francois can give you the control of the uh, of the screen. Can you see my screen? No. Yeah. Uh, uh, yes, it's the enterprise backlog, actually. No. No, no, it's this is my screen. Paolo is uh, is going on, went on. Okay, let me share again. Maybe there is a <coughs> technical issue. So you missed some animation, I suppose. Yes. That's, uh, oh, that's unfortunate. Okay, can you can you see my screen yes. now? Yes, yes, yes. Yes, uh, print execution. Okay, let, let's see okay. again this animation because. So, so this is the sprint execution, the swarming pattern, and the, now the, the, the interruption. So basically we plan for less work, and then uh, we start working normally, we have this interruption, we decide, the product owner decide if it's legit or not, in case you put it on a buffer, the first available developer or developers take care of it. They can even swarm around it if it's very critical and they get it done. And then if we have too many interruptions, we replan notif and notifying to the management or the stakeholders if something, some dates are, uh, are, are, are not met in advance so that they can know. So with this pattern, Having multiple teams, you get a very useful behavior that David in some way introduced already. I have an animation to show you how it works. So you have multiple teams. You have uh, everybody has uh, a buffer in their own uh, sprint backlog. And you get, uh, as before, an interruption. This is a, a, a legit, uh, legitimate it interruption. So we decide to, to do it now. But then, unfortunately, we have another interruption. Oh, and now, well, the, the basic uh, 
but I would say, okay, if it's really urgent, uh, do that uh, and replan and uh, remove something from your plan and notify to the people interested uh, about this replanning that you are, you are not delivering that sprint. But since uh, we are a team of teams uh, working together and helping each other, we can ask for help and somebody that has, can accommodate some work in day buffer, freeing up the space for, for dealing also with these uh, 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 new, new um, uh, emergencies that arose during the spring. So having this, the, the interruption pattern in every sprint backlog uh, allows the teams, multiple teams, uh, to be reactive during the sprint uh, and also have uh, these uh, uh, it's, it's like uh, the, 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 the definition of team of teams, so, so helping each other and uh, being able to quickly react to the new emergencies. And so the Scrum of Scrum, we discussed about the Meta Scrum already. We have also, we said, the daily Scrum and the scale perspective. So we have a person in that called Nicoletta, she played the roles or the role of the Scrum or Scrum Master, they daily meet with all the Scrum Master, they manage the inter-team dependency and, uh, and the impediment, and uh, if something needs to be escalated, uh, NET has this flat uh, uh, structure so that basically the Scrum or Scrum Master is also part of the management team, and so in this uh, situation, it would be called in Scrum Scale the executive action team. And so we have uh, an escalation that it's uh, almost uh, instant because it's the same person, so very uh, 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 nimble organization that can uh, react quickly. Of course, you need some cross-team coordination. And so we have another pattern called the birds of a feeder in the Scrum book. Traditionally, also known as a community of practice. So, for engineering, every team has different uh, disciplines. So, you, you have uh, people designing the CAD, you have structural engineer, you, you have uh, hydraulic engineer, you have uh, uh, expert for, for the environment, uh, uh, the landscaping, sorry, impact. Uh, you have multiple uh, uh, disciplines. So if I, uh, let's pretend I'm the orange guy of this team and I have uh, a, a, a very deep expertise in, in, in one domain. Now I have a question about my domain. My, the, the orangeness of, uh, uh, of this question is not allowing me to ask it to my colleagues because they are from different disciplines. So we, what we need with multiple teams, uh, similarly on what Spotify do, it's the uh, cross uh, uh, team coordination. And maybe, of course, uh, all the people designing on CAD, they want to talk to each other for sharing uh, uh, practices and also having a kind of uh, uh, question and answer. All the hydraulic engineers want to, to have a, a, a lateral coordination and so on. But also you can have... Uh, a uh, less linear coordination within teams for generic uh, topics uh, like, I don't know, security and security, and, sorry, safety. Safety in, in a work, there might be something that includes multiple disciplines, so there might be lines not really straight like the previous one. And of course, uh, for every cross team coordination, we, we have a champion, the, the people with the, the C that they are the more senior, most of the time, uh, person in the company about uh, some, some topics. Uh, and, also it, uh, and so he plays uh, as a prior inter pares, we would say in Latin. So a, a, a first one uh, between pair, uh, pairs that uh, take care that the, the conversation uh, is progressing smoothly and there is the, a very good uh, rate of, of uh, communication. And the sprint review, and of course, sorry, I was uh, for, for giving this. Uh, so, of course, if you are a leader, be ready to be part of a team uh, as a team member and serving our other teams uh, as some roles or specific topics. That's 
is valid from the CEO in, in, to, to, to every employee that uh, is uh, a leader in the, in, for some topics in this company. And finally, sprint reviews. Uh, now, at the moment, uh, all the sprint reviews, excluding the, the first uh, pilot team uh, that happened before COVID, uh, all the other teams, uh, all the other nine teams that started before, uh, during the pandemic, uh, we do sprint reviews uh, remotely. So how collect uh, feedback uh, and inspect an increment that might be a, a railroad, a rail station, or a, a bridge, a tunnel, or, or, or even something composite with multiple uh, 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 things, where we use design renders, uh, we, we use uh, some CAD as well, we, we use uh, anything we may. So for example, this is a, a railroad planning, we also timetables uh, to make understand uh, how the traffic will be divided between different time during the, the day, the morning, the afternoon, and also we use uh, uh, some kind of uh, uh, augmented reality, some picture that starts from real picture and then they have some uh, layers on top with renders to make an understanding of how it will it look like. And so like it, it is one you see. And so we, we are trying to experiment the best that we can uh, given the current technology to have uh, a very rich feedback, uh, a rich understanding uh, of what uh, we are building. So results, I'm going to leave again to Marco for Encosec, and then uh, finally we will take over with the final consideration from NetEG. Marco. Okay. So Francois, if you give me again uh, the control. OK, let, oh, sorry. I, I, just a minute. Okay. So I present you Fran Francesco Ricci as our director. And so his words. Uh, first of all, uh, we've done more things with less people. Uh, Customers are really interested in uh, what they say when they come here in the uh, in the Scrum room or when they see the the board. They are uh, really curious about them. Um, we are more in control of all the roadmap, so we we can maintain timings in a more precise way. Uh, when there are big problems. Uh, uh, we, have, we, we can stop the line and call a scrum when problems are too big to, to solve. And also, as, uh, as Net2, uh, people onboarding is really fast. So new, new architects, new, new people can, can, uh, bring, uh, can join the team in, uh, in a faster way. There are also uh, some uh, uh, point of attention that uh, are, are, uh, are not related to, to Scrum, maybe, but to the change management that uh, is inside the adoption of a, of a new uh, framework or methodology. Uh, because, uh, as, uh, as you know, Agile is simple, but it's not easy. So all of us needs to learn a new way to work. Uh, this is what we, we think uh, we, we, are, we, we have to, to concentrate in the, in the next times. So product owners need to work more on the, on the definition of done in order to maximize quality control and time expenditure on single project stories. Because it's from here, from the stories, from what from how do you describe the stories that uh, you can gain quality control and time expenditure. Because uh, in our work, there is no uh, real product increment each sprint. So it's really difficult to show to, to the customer uh, a prototype or something like that. So uh, to assure quality and uh, and, um, and maintain the, the project economic, you have to concentrate on the, uh, on the definition of done. 
also the Scrum Master, uh, the Scrum Masters, the Scrum Masters, and we have two two really nice uh, Scrum Masters. They need to enhance the, the team sense of behavior and facilitate it to spread different project stories between team people. Uh, this is also uh, related to the to the other points because team members need to be more transparent on help needs and to accept that team working is not a loss of power. Uh, is a, is a, is a human uh, or in, in Occident. Uh, team members tend to grow from the, to their projects and to have a stronger comfort zone in them. So it, it's uh, this thing that needs to be more uh, integrated in EncTech. And uh, also, a team needs to be more focused both on stop starting and start finishing, as always. So next step, uh, we will do things uh, one little step in a time, but always. And also, we, we would like to, to, to do more experiments with uh, SiteWorks boards that uh, in, some, in, in some experiments uh, um, had uh, pretty good results in some other no. So we have to, to, to check to understand better if we can, uh, um, uh, if, if we can uh, involve all the actors in, uh, in this way of, uh, of uh, working. We so, yeah. won't see plumbers moving post-its. Yeah, difficult. Really <laughs> difficult, David. It's really difficult. <laughs> Silvia, it's up to you. Thank you. Thanks. And uh, Francois, maybe if you can change the the the, the screen to Paolo. Thank you. Okay, done. So okay. Our, our results. Uh, let's say that our scam revolution. Uh, started uh, when the beam revolution had already started some years ago. So we have these two different um, implementation uh, that are ongoing. And what we saw is that uh, they are helping each other because they share a lot. Uh, both frameworks um, are based on knowledge, on, on knowledge sharing, um, help people to see the big picture not just their own speciality, their own skills, but you always have to uh, look at the big picture, to see interaction, to understand uh, what your project is about as a whole. So you're always, you always going out of your comfort zone. And uh, BIM is one of the first community of practice that started and is um, a tool somehow that is um, helping us in reducing the risk of isolation between teams. Uh, because since we were in a matrix organization, uh, now that we go to teams, uh, one of the risks that we see is that the team is too much focused uh, on uh, its own activities and results and not really keen on collaborating with the others. And community of practice and BIM in particular uh, is helping us to um, reduce this risk. Um, going to the results, of course, uh, with the Scrum Master, uh, we are identifying and removing impediments, and they're closing much quickly. Uh, in our daily meeting, we uh, share all the difficult situation, and we try to solve them um, as quickly as possible, and this is or really improving every day. Um, the uh, approach uh, of Scrum based on teams uh, is helping us very much also in the onboarding process of new people. Uh, uh, and even more during this pandemic uh, situation where we are all uh, distant and far from each other, having our daily uh, meeting, our um, um, events uh, is helping a lot people in feeling uh, part of the, of the company and understanding much better what they have to do. Um, and also, uh, one of the most interesting things is really that we are able to see problems earlier uh, and to make the decision uh, with more information than before. Um, we are more transparent, not because 
uh, that were information hidden somewhere uh, before, but once uh, all the information are shared, and for instance, uh, maybe it's the, in the next slide, uh, you can see our uh, product owner uh, Trello, that is the enterprise backing. Here, all the projects that are coming are tracked. Uh, we see what we have to do uh, in the current months, uh, from in the next three months, from three to six, and so on. And this is shared. All the information are there. Uh, and this is helping us very much in making the better decision uh, very quickly. Um, again, we are reducing complexity. For us as management team, uh, it's much easier, of course, to manage 10 teams than 100 people. Uh, and also with, for people inside the team, it's much easier, uh, the collaboration. Uh, and also the, the line of communication are much clearer. Um, the continuity of people on projects that we are pushing a lot uh, is helping them to understand better, to be more effective and also to be more satisfied because something that was uh, many, many times in the past um, discussed and, and, and one of the biggest complaints is I'm just taken from a project to another, I'm just jumping from one thing to another, I don't know what's going on. I don't understand uh, what is the importance of what I'm doing now. Being on a team, uh, being focused on a project that is involving the team uh, as, uh, as a whole, and this is something that we are trying to do as much as possible, is really helping people to see the big picture and to make the best decision. And of course, um, Scrum through uh, its events and, and, and roles uh, is helping us to foster the feedback culture, which is essential to be sure that our projects are the right projects, are done in the right way, and feedback within the organization, but also with feedback with the client. Points of attention. Um, there was a question before, uh, how do you call product owner and scrum master? Uh, we call them product owner and scrum master, but even if the definition of this role are pretty clear, it's very, very difficult to understand them uh, and to act as product owner and also as scrum master. Still, our product owners are a lot of uh, um, in their head uh, and in their activities are project managers. We are grown up uh, with a project management approach, uh, the traditional one, the waterfall, so it's not just press the button of, of Scrum and understand that now you are a product owner and not only a project manager. And this is something that needs time uh, and support. Uh, and for Scrum Master, maybe it's easier to understand their role and, and activities, but it's harder and it's hard, both for Scrum Master and for the owners because they are very much involved in technical delivery. So no, but none of our Scrum Master is just a Scrum Master. Does uh, act as Scrum Master, but also is involved in projects. And this is... Uh, very challenging many times. So this double role, double hat is, is not a easy uh, point to solve. Uh, we need to solve some criticalities uh, when projects are split uh, in more than one team because our projects are big. Uh, so uh, just one team is not able to develop everything or maybe a team does not have all the competencies to uh, develop the project. So we need to really understand better which is the best way um, to foster the collaboration and not to feel people that they are losing time. Still, uh, it's not perceived uh, the value of the Scrum event. Uh, not of the daily, because it's something that, even if at the beginning it was something strange, why 
do we have to tell each other what we do every day for 15 minutes or uh, I cannot do this at that time. Uh, but this is already done. Uh, still for review, retrospective and planning, it's not always uh, clear and, and really perceived and felt uh, the importance of these events. Um, sometimes what, what we, are, we are told is, I have to work. I do not have time for Scrum. And, and this is something that, again, uh, needs to be uh, accompanied because on the other side, what we are told is we need to find a way and a time to talk. So you say, okay, but you have this Scrum event. Why aren't you talking in the Scrum event? So this is something that needs to be fine-tuned. Uh, our next step uh, of course, so points of attention. We would like also to extend Scrum uh, internationally because we are not only Italian, uh, we are present in Germany with, you know, with a sister company and in projects at international level. And of course, keep improving. Okay, so... Thank you. Now we can remove uh, the sharing. Uh, and uh, Francois, do we have a lot of questions for our guests? Uh, yes, uh, some question. So thank you very much for this uh, very interesting presentation. It was very uh, concrete how you 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 manage uh, your Scrum workflow. Uh, yes, you have a question of uh, Goodly Kurangara. So it was, uh, can you share name of some top GC companies who have applied at Scrum? So do do you have ideas uh, about that? And he has this question. Easy, no. Yes, no. No. I signed up as an MDA, so th there are very big company. Yes. At uh, national level, international level. Some even uh, state-owned company that they are start implementing Scrum. I can name that. Yet. So the first mm -hmm. one I can name in this bit space is Ecotech and Metagene. We are covering them today. Uh, so, uh, one thing yeah. might be go on Google and try to see and <laughs> check for Scrum Master on the HR department and hiring process. Yeah. You can uh, understand that we companies doing Scrum by that. <laughs> that might be a, a trick. I, I, it works. I, mm -hmm. I hear that uh, Tesla built their uh, um, industrial building uh, like that. No, do you have information about that? Or? Yeah, uh, the Tesla is a scrumming uh, client. I can, <laughs> I can, I'm not allowed to talk about. I work with, with okay. scrumming in some clients mm. in multiple uh, spa, uh, sectors, but I'm not allowed to talk about the scrumming clients. Uh, you have to ask them. Well, George Justice is talking a lot about Tesla, so okay, uh, we'll, yeah. we'll inv inv invite him next time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes, for please. sure. For sure, would be it will be a, a very a very uh, even even him at to has some restriction in what we can say. <laughs> okay. You know, it, it, if you do these kind of things very well, it's a competitive advantage. So when you have company opening up, they share what they consider already done, and they uh, you can them what the next step. So none of them are so open. Like the one yeah. I, I, I have a, a personal question. So, uh, did you uh, create a, um, complementary between your, the, the, your two companies? Because uh, one is a construction company, uh, the other one is in, more engineer. So, did you work together to, to see if you, you can make a scrum of scrum of scrum? <laughs> Let's hope, maybe in the future. Maybe in the future. Not yet. Maybe. <laughs> okay, so next meetup. <laughs> Um, I have another question. So, have, have the metric on application of Scrum in construction team shown substantial uh, impact in your use cases? So, did, did you uh, uh, take some metric uh, when you you implement all this uh, Scrum approach? And did you have something to to tell us about that? Um, ladies first, or should I go? <laughs> okay. Well, we... Marco managed numbers all the day. 
<laughs> and also the night, <laughs> but uh, not for passion. <laughs> but uh, well, uh, um, <clears throat> we don't have. It, it's difficult to have uh, a, a precise relation because many things change uh, are changing. But uh, I can give you some hints because uh, before adopting Scrum, uh, since uh, I. I, I joined Encotech uh, as an IT manager. So uh, uh, we, we started to, to, to check projects uh, each month. And also we have the balance sheet at the end of the year or end of the quarter that show numbers. So we were uh, in a situation where uh, uh, each month uh, uh, people uh, were justifying them to because they they didn't have uh, reached the, the the results and also uh, the situation seems uh, really bad because uh, timings were, were not so good and uh, and many things like that after scrum with uh, with uh, a little increment in our structure uh, thinking about uh, people that belongs to the team we we govern more projects and uh, as you can see from the, 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 the board uh, on, the, uh, on my back, uh, they are really strict in time. Each month, uh, we, have, we, 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 we reach uh, the objective. And uh, so the, the result, uh, you can see also on the, 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 the balance of the, the year. So uh, there is no a real, a, a strict correlation between numbers to compare because uh, something like uh, allocation or green dollar hours or something like that are, are not so easily comparable. But uh, everything is going in the right way. So we have a really positive uh, experience and uh, numbers on that. Hope to, to have uh, answered. Mm. OK, and in, uh, in uh, net engineering? Uh, we do not have any metrics yet. Uh, we started a few months ago. We are checking many, um, um, many items, I would say. For instance, the number of, in, of uh, interruption that we have during the sprint, because this is something that is happening many, many times, more than, than what we thought. Um, so we are trying to, take, to check this and to take note and see if this is something that is going to be better and better. But we expect to see the first numbers, let's say, uh, by the end of this year, because mm. it takes time and, and still we are adapting a bit the teams we are trying to understand. So um, it's, too, it, it, it's not enough time. Yeah. Uh, so you don't have concrete uh, numbers, but uh, yes, the feeling is good. There is yes. a more good point than bad point. And so mm -hmm. my, my, my next question is, do you think you, you, have, uh, you, are, you are now at the point of no return to the, in the use of Scrum? Because uh, yes, it's very difficult to, to change the mind of the people. And, and sometimes you, you go uh, in one sense and after you have to go back and... Uh, uh, so it depends. And so, do you, do you think now it's it's stable? And uh... Silvia, so same, same order. Oh, would you, you change oh. Silvia first? Okay. Ladies first <coughs> for so this one. So, sorry, I've I've lost the the the, um, the connection. So, yes. So do you do you think you you have uh, you are now at the point of no return to to use I the hope Scrum? So. I hope so. <laughs> I'm not sure. So the, uh, your culture is uh, is uh, strong in in Scrum and, uh, and in Agile. I mean, and, uh... it, it, it's a difficult challenge uh, because you you really need to enter into this different mindset. Uh, and we all, as I said before, we are all grown up uh, with mm, project management waterfall. Uh, so I, uh, I expect that it takes time. Uh, to really understand um, also the potential uh, of Scrum. Um, I hope we are at the point of no return, but still I need to be 
um, uh, cautiously optimistic. Same thoughts uh, for Encotec too. <laughs> so mm. It's and a so long way. The change management, it's a long, long way yeah, because yeah, yeah. you have to change your mind in a complete manner. So it's not easy. Can you tell us again? You, you have a one year of, uh, of, um, of return or it's more? Sorry? You, you, you experiment Scrum for more than one year? I don't remember, sorry. Yeah, your... yeah, yeah, yeah. Two years and a half, more or less. Two years and a half, okay. okay. Yeah, it's a long for process. Us, for us, it's six months. So. So, yes, yes, so for... Uh, mm, it's less. But in six months, you, 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 you feel the, the, the better quality. Okay. About this topic, let me say something, though. What I mean... It's not like moving from point A to point B. It's more a journey. And when you start to get visibility and transparency on what happens in your company, it's not about just the process or the things that you see in a Scrum framework. You start improving a lot of other things that are not directly connected to the Scrum framework, but it's an opportunity. So, for example, when, when Silvia was talking about uh, we, we are fostering the, the feedback uh, uh, culture, they, that started even before. So another person came before me and helped them in, 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 in this topic. I remember some conversation recently, for example, in a, in a big topic about information management. So I, I, I raised a challenge to them and say, let's say now that I want to remember, I, I remember vaguely something happened in a pre-sprint uh, review ago and that was somebody mentioning this. How can just type and find uh, this information uh, from my computer without uh, asking anybody? That's it's really the digital transformation topic uh, that it's outside the scope, uh, but it's happening at the same time. So. Um, on metrics, I will be careful because if you focus on metrics and you will discover efficiency, what we want to achieve effectiveness. And effectiveness, unfortunately, it's a late uh, metric. So it, 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 it have, you see it uh, after some time. And so most of the time, the gut feeling, uh, it's also quite, uh, quite useful. And unfortunately, it cannot be measured and plotted in nice graph. But the effectiveness, it's way much more what uh, a company owner and entrepreneur wants. And so mm. that's, that's something we should consider. Okay. Uh, we have another question from Gianluca Peron. Uh, how uh, you can manage project with electric, structural, hydraulic, geodic, technical, architectural skill needs with only uh, four or five uh, people in the Scrum team? Uh, especially it's our external to our teams. So there are other companies, other actors that uh, we interact with. And in uh, net engineering, you have a specific pattern? Or each team are with one architect, one structural, or there is a different uh, let's uh, composition? Say that our teams, our teams are, are a little bigger. Uh, we are around 10 people, sometimes <laughs> twice, uh, uh, exactly because we need to have not only just one structural or hydraulic or technical engineer, but maybe two because you have a senior and a junior. You cannot leave a junior in a team mm. like he's, he's alone. So our teams are bigger. And what we are trying to do is to put in one team a project, so not too much divided uh, through many teams, uh, so that people are working together. If you need someone senior or if you need someone that has a different skill, you raise your hand and you ask to other teams. And this is what is happening, for instance, during the review. Uh, we are uh, inviting teams, are inviting uh, champions of other teams uh, to let them see what they have developed and ask for feedbacks to understand if what they have done is right can be done better or in a different way if there are other experiences and this is something we are also doing during the refinement of the backlog uh, trying to put in the teams the back up, uh, a backlog that can be done uh, consider the feature of the team uh, 
this is probably one of the biggest challenge that we have because uh, our team is, in any case, small. It's maximum 10 to 12 people. And if we think to our projects, uh, when we were in, in the matrix team, uh, projects were involving from 20 to 25 people in different times that were changing every time. So this is something we, we are experiencing exactly now. But we are already seeing, and this is probably, it's not really a metric, but as a result, that there are people that are starting to do something in other discipline or something different, something that they haven't done before, and probably in, in the previous organization they would have never done, because they were in a box doing uh, the structural work or the geotechnical one, and not really seeing what there is uh, outside their activity. Mm. Okay, and and, um, and I think it was more in, in Ecotech, but uh, you, you you say that there is um, people are more specialized, so and the tasks are divided in a, in a more um, short things. So uh, is is people uh, the engagement of people is the same or because uh, they work on a lot of uh, short tasks and uh, is, is there a sense to do that? Uh, did people uh, do people uh, feel a sense to their work if you, you divide the work in a lot of uh, uh, short things and uh, and you work in one project one day another one in the other day yeah uh, as i said before uh, this is a little bit a problem because uh, when people uh, start uh, new projects at the beginning uh, all the teams uh, solve stories of uh, this project then there is a sort of a specialization that uh, with the time goes on and so uh, people tend to to grow fond their projects so they love they, their project it's not uh, and so it's difficult to make understand to these people that uh, they don't lose power if they mm. uh, share stories uh, and there is, uh, like, uh, in all the human being, there is uh, someone that is more uh, orientated in doing uh, this, in sharing, and, and that has, uh, it's more uh, self-conscious and uh, of himself. And someone that is, uh, that, uh, that, um, is not so strong and, uh, and feels that uh, if someone else uh, do his job, then uh, he is not necessary. To, so it's uh, it's um, it's different. It's difficult to to maintain uh, some sort of equilibrium. But uh, it's the one direction when where we are we are pushing because uh, we 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 believe that it's the right way, and uh, it's more easier on the design phase. It's more difficult in the direction of work phase, but uh, we are trying to manage uh, the, these uh, two things. Okay, uh, I, I want to uh, to have more information about uh, retrospective, but because I, I think it's a very important uh, uh, part of the of the agility, and uh, and you, you don't uh, tell um, the period for this uh, uh, retrospective. For for me in my architectural company, uh, we, we make a retrospective at the end of uh, each st stage. So normally it's two or three months. So it's not. Yeah. Uh, normally, it's uh, at every iteration, but uh, but it works like that, and uh, for the moment, it's good. So, so in your company, uh, how it how it works? More or less each three months. <coughs> three months, okay. Yeah, with all the company, you you tell. all the company. Yeah, join together. We start with uh, silent brainstorming and uh, putting all the things in paper, uh, uh, one by itself, and then we put them uh, in a, in a in a board or in a window, as you have seen, and trying to 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 put them in uh, in uh, in the same uh, uh, in the same place uh, the, with yeah, the same uh, board. Meaning. To clusterize. Yeah, cluster. Okay, thank you. So we clusterize all the the post, and then we we make a decision on how to proceed uh, for the future. 
In Matt, we do retrospective uh, at the end of each sprint. Our sprint takes two weeks, um, so it's very frequent, I would say. Mm -hmm. uh, it's about one hour. Uh, we try to use different patterns and different uh, ways in order to make the retrospective every time interesting for the people. Um, what we um, what we see is that uh, there are a lot of ideas uh, for um, improvements. Uh, what is difficult is to uh, go out of a retrospective with one improvement in the planning. So this is something we are working on uh, to be able to really put the improvement side of our job into the planning. But still, we think it's important to have it so frequently uh, because then ideas are coming and, and at the end. Uh, yeah, yeah. My, my, my fear is that people uh, have nothing to, to say and uh, that you, you each, for each retrospective there is new idea, you, you tell us. Yes, yes. Um, and sometimes maybe you are repeating the same, but this means that you really need to find a way to mm. put uh, this improvement in your backlog and do something. Um, so, and if, I mean, there's nothing to say, okay, let's go to work. But at the end, there's always a lot to discuss. Okay. Okay, thank you. And uh, for me, I, I have a last question because we are in a meetup uh, Agile Beam. <laughs> so uh, it's more for, uh, for um, net engineering uh, because you work on Beam. So. Uh, you, you talk a little bit about uh, BIM, but can you talk uh, more about that subject and what is the role of the BIM manager, for example? Did, did he have a specific role in the Scrum organization? Is, is, is it a Scrum master too? Or? No, he's not a Scrum master. He's a member of a team and, of course, a champion of BIM. So he's pretty much involved in all the teams and the idea is to have um, not necessarily a BIM manager, but at least a BIM coordinator or a BIM specialist in each team. Mm. Um, as I said, our team are either multidisciplinary or monodisciplinary. Uh, so we need to, and, and uh, you need uh, people, uh, experts in BIM in all the different disciplines. So what we are doing is really through our community of practice, we are building uh, through our projects and sharing our experiences, the competencies and the skills on BIM. Uh, but still, uh, the BIM manager is part of one team. Uh, we are thinking um, about this because as we did for other people that at the beginning, they were inside the team and then we understood that it was better to have them outside because they were so present in all the teams that really being in a team was not really making sense. Hmm. Uh, maybe this can happen also for the BIM manager, but for the moment, uh, he's within a team uh, and working and supporting all the others. And, and you had a strong culture of BIM before? Uh... Mm, let's say two, two, three years of experience in hmm. BIM. So, so my question uh, was, uh, uh, do you think that uh, working with Scrum uh, <clears throat> helping uh, you to go uh, to go faster in the beam adoption in, in your project, and or I better beam? So. I don't know. Uh, if you think of, of of beam models, I mean, you you have already your artifact to show in, in your review, uh, and I hope that in the future we will be ready to really work on beam and to get to the review showing the, the model mm -hmm. because it's it's really the, the way if you think it's something that uh, makes engineering very uh, similar to uh, Scrum uh, in, uh, in, uh, in hardware as Paolo said when something to show real uh, we have projects we are design maybe we will be able to show our model so I think they are helping each other because 
at the end, PIM, it's a lot about software, of course, but it's an approach. It's about methodology. It's about sharing. It's about looking at the interaction between the different disciplines. So mm. I expect these two sides of our job will help each other. And inside the team, there is engineer and uh, model um, uh, people who are, who are work, who are uh, designing in uh, Revit or other software. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, engineers, draftsmen, architects, uh, mm -hmm. geologists, scientists, I mean, traffic planners, uh, all the different uh, field of, of civil engineering, I would say, from mobility, uh, transport planning, um, highway or railway tracking, uh, mm -hmm. st structural people, geotechnical, mm -hmm. hydraulics, environmental. Does, and does it help the, the way uh, engineer and craftsman uh, drawer are working together? Yes, yes, because they are talking each other to each other every day, and they are really following things together. And and does engineer work more in the in the beam model or are they drawing uh, some part of the beam model or? Let's say that it depends on the projects. Uh, because uh, still uh, many of our clients are not asking BIM, so uh, it's depending on the projects. Yeah, okay. Uh, mm -hmm. I was just checking uh, my question. Uh, Sebastian, do, do, do you have uh, other question? Ah uh, yes, you have. You told me a question in a private chat. Yes, uh, you are back. Hello, hello. Uh, I have a question about the, because you you practice uh, Scrum inside a specific company, construction company or engineer company, but we know that the the project is made by the coordination of uh, several companies, uh, the architects, the owners, the engineer. So do you think it's possible at one one day to have a, a Scrum of Scrum at the level of the project, or is it a bit too topical? <laughs> For us, it's a dream. Yes. <laughs> uh, and uh, we are trying to extend just a little bit our borders uh, sometimes, uh, so to involve someone. And um, it's not too easy, but uh, it's not so easy, but uh, it's something that we want to do. So mm -hmm. we hope to. it should be a better world if, uh, if we can have a Scrum of Scrum. For mm -hmm. our with our our partners, we Is experienced that, uh, in Encotech. Uh, we had the experience that uh, difficult customers are uh, easier to manage uh, if they are involved. It's not mm -hmm. easy, like Marco said. Uh, it's not easy because they <coughs> don't have uh, a lot of time to 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 make these activities, but. Uh, uh, involving uh, customers uh, make uh, really comfortable the project. Mm -hmm. Yes, because uh, what uh, we identify is that uh, if we compare the, the Scrum in industry and the Scrum in construction, in industry generally you have a single actor, a big company uh, with all the level integrated. The design, the construction, as well. enfin, the execution, and in construction, one of the of the, the problem of the difficulties is that uh, it's a combination of several actors. You know, this makes uh, the 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 scrum at the level of the project a bit uh, difficult. I think. Is is there any pattern uh, for this in in scrum? Is there any any pattern? There yeah. is actually. So because uh, I published that uh, when I in my first case study the the BIMA. and basically what you do when you have patterns you 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 agree on a list of deliverables and, and you just uh, reduce whip so you ask uh, uh, as soon as you have a deliverable get uh, send me back and so in in uh, you've done this kind of scales from uh, across also patterns. And I think it's going to be a, a, a trend that it will happen if we look back in history uh, how Lean spread. Lean started spreading when Toyota started teaching these things uh, to the suppliers. 
and then university started talking about that, and then the things started. Of course, having visibility, uh, sh uh, sh uh, short batch sizes, uh, frequent feedbacks uh, helps everybody. Even the, the the money flow, the cash flow, it, it's better if you have a short uh, batch and uh, uh, frequent deliveries. So I think it's a matter of, of time now. With Sylvia, yeah. they are beginning, but. I think that, uh, of course, I would be very happy to, to live in its calm world, uh, but still is not the case. I mean, if I think to our clients, we work with public clients. Can you see Italian public clients scrum? Uh, we do not have scrum contracts, for instance. Uh, everything around us is not scrum. We do scrum for ourselves, first of all because we really believe that this is the way in which we can get the most satisfaction for our work. Because at the end, our people are passionate people and uh, you want to be engaged and involved and really feel that there's something important you are doing. And so th this is the first reason. And then um, we are changing our way of looking at things, to discussing the project, and to ask for feedbacks. So somehow our reorganizational uh, is, is making changes also outside us. We are working in a different way. I don't know what, uh, to which extent this will go. Difficult to say, but at least is something that is helping us and is affecting also the world that is outside. Either the clients, either, I mean, w w one of the things we are working a lot on is, for instance, public engagement, uh, because all the infrastructure are uh, passing through communities and everybody wants to be able to say, no, I do not agree, the NIMBY uh, process. And we are helping some clients to really gather these feedbacks uh, and try to find the best way. And somehow this is Scrum because it's putting together all the stakeholders and put their heads on a specific item, discuss and go the step further. So we, we can, uh, I think, identify many ways of implementing Scrum, not only in the organization, but also in the contents that we are doing. Okay, thank you for this uh, <laughs> good engagement, and uh, we, uh, I think it, uh, it was uh, very, uh, very interesting. And uh, thank for your, your, um, your, 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 your uh, I don't find my, <laughs> my words. <laughs> okay. Let's say in French. Let's yeah. Say for, <laughs> Well, enthusiasm. Uh, yeah. Enthusiastic. Okay. Uh, so I think it's uh, it's the end now. Two hours of, uh, of uh, for the meetup. So we respect the time. Great. Thank you, uh, everyone. Uh, so you, you can uh, yes we you can find the, the replay of the live uh, in uh, in YouTube, and with I think in comments you you have some links uh, uh, of uh, our. Of all the people that are here tonight, and uh, but it's the end for this uh, year for our meetup. So uh, I don't know if you if you have a word for for the end. You want to share a word uh, with us or? Thank like, you. Okay. And uh, yes, so uh, I want to say thank you to to everyone. Uh, have a good summer, and we will we'll be back uh, in September, I think, uh, probably with more with uh, Scrum Inc organization and uh, and good luck to italy for the final <laughs> yes good luck thank you very much thank you everyone bye bye, bye. 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 ciao ciao